Betty! Betty, it's Jimmy! Mr. Durham, something's happened to Betty. Force the door open. Singing violin. Betty, darling. The singing violin. It was here again. I saw it. I heard it. The singing violin. I heard it. Betty. I saw it. Give her one of these. It's the sedative Dr. Marino left for her. She will attend to my stepdaughter. You wondered, Willand, why I invited you to my home as my weekend guest. I thought our coming marriage, Betty's and mine, had something to do with it, sir. Uh, no. I wanted you to see for yourself why that marriage can never take place. I don't understand, sir. Are you blind, Willand? After what you've just witnessed, don't you realize that my stepdaughter is losing her mind? She never told me. Naturally. Dancing skeletons, headless men, and tonight, a singing violin. Surely, sir, it must be merely her imagination. Nightmares. But she insists the things that she sees are real. Positive proof of incipient dementia precox. I regret to have to tell you this, my boy. My doctor informs me that in a matter of weeks, if not days, Betty must be certified as hopelessly mad. Thompson file, Wilkins. You know that hatchet killer? Yes, sir. Mr. Holmes did a neat bit of work on that case, don't you think, sir? Might I remind you, Wilkins, that Scotland Yard also worked on that case? Yes, sir. What shall I do with the file, sir? Put it in the case's closed file, of course. Very good, sir. Crime seems to be falling off in London this week, sir. It's been a dull week. Yes, it's so dull, I'm going to do something about it. What, sir? I'm going to visit our old friend Sherlock Holmes. I've noticed that when we've got no crime, he has. <laughs> girl having hallucinations, a worried housekeeper, an austere stepfather, a heartbroken boy, a gloomy old house in a quiet section of London. That was one of the most bizarre and terrifying cases ever to challenge the talents of my extraordinary friend Sherlock Holmes. We were plunged into it one drowsy day in mid-September when murder, sudden and brutal, came calling. What is that? It's like a shot from the street. Oh. 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 
stand back there. Stand back. What's happened to your passenger? He, he's dead, sir. Dead? True enough. He's been shot. What's going on here? This man in the carriage, Inspector. Shot he was, sir. All right, let's stand back here, please. Stand back, please. Stand back. Let's move along here, please. Please. Stand back, please. Move along here, please. Please stand back. Move along here, please. Move along. Officer. Yes, sir. You take charge here. Yes, sir. All right, driver. What do you know about this? Uh, I don't know. I, I was... We were... Hmm. We were about to have a visitor. Where? What do, you, what do you mean, where? Yes, a young man, but he was murdered before he reached here. Murdered? I didn't know. Let's move along, please. Move along, fall over. Move along, please. Strade, I've been expecting you. I didn't know myself I was coming here until a few minutes ago. I suppose you also know why I came here? Murder. Both Dr. Watson and I heard the shot. Uh, I observed part of the proceedings through the binoculars. This was found in his pocket. Sherlock Holmes, 221B Baker Street. Hmm. Hmm. He was obviously employed by a tea and spice merchant. The aroma is unmistakable, eh, Watson? Oh, unmistakable. <laughs> the boy's wallet gave us some further information. His name was James Winnant. He lived at number five Crestwood Place. He was employed by Stackhurst and Durham, tea and spice merchants. Stackhurst. Stackhurst. Does the name mean something to you, Holmes? Well, it should. Stackhurst and Durham appears in almost every tin of tea sold in England. What was young Winnant's business with you, Holmes? Winnant. Durham. Ah. I've never heard of Winnant before. Were you able to ascertain anything from the cabbie? No. One of the passers-by heard him say, the singing violin. The singing violin? No, that can't mean anything, I'm sure. Can't mean anything, Lestrade. Well, now, of course not. Get your hat, Watson. Well, where are we going home? To interview the murderer of Jimmy Winnant, of course. You mean to say you know who killed him? Of course I do. Don't you? who lives in this dreary monument to great wealth? Guy Durham. Durham? Wasn't he one of the partners of the firm that employed young Winnant? Yes, the only surviving member. Stackhurst died 15 years ago. Holmes, you said we were going to visit Winnant's murderer. I did. Yes? Good morning. Uh, I'm Sherlock Holmes, and this is Dr. Watson. I'd like a word with Mr. Guy Durham. Here is my card. I'll tell him, for all the good it'll do. He left word he doesn't want to be disturbed. Come in. Oh, permit me, madam, to congratulate you on your new position. Thank you. How do you know I'm new here? Mrs. Ferguson, who is at the door? Excuse me. How did you know? Well, she was unfamiliar with the position of the curtain cord. She obviously hasn't been employed here very long. Oh, obviously. I'm sorry, sir, but Mr. Dunham can't. Oh. What is the meaning of this? 
I'm sorry, sir. They pushed in before I could stop them. I must apologize for this intrusion, Mr. Durham, but it's imperative that I speak to you. Oh, very well. As long as you're here, what do you want? I take it you are Sherlock Holmes. At your service, sir. And this is my friend and colleague, Dr. Watson. Gregor, sir. How do you do? Uh, sit down. I regret to say that I am the bearer of bad tidings, Mr. Durham. Your prospective son-in-law was murdered not two hours ago. What? Wint murdered? But Holmes... The engagement announcement of Miss Betty Durham and Mr. James Winnant was published in the Times not two days ago. Mr. James Winnant was on his way to see me when he was ambushed and shot. But what did he want to see you about? Don't you know, Mr. Durham? No. Then perhaps Miss Betty, your stepdaughter, I believe. Uh, yes, Betty is my stepdaughter. I adopted her when I married her mother. Uh, perhaps she might be able to provide some information. I am sorry. I'm afraid I cannot allow you to see her. She has been in a highly overwrought frame of mind of late. Only this morning, uh, under the advice of her doctor, I sent her away for a complete rest. Moreover, it is best under her present mental condition that she should remain in ignorance of Winnant's death. Oh, that's most unfortunate. Probably the excitement of her forthcoming marriage brought on uh, an emotional upset. Not only probably, Doctor, but true. And now, if you'll excuse me, I regret I cannot be of any more help to you. Oh, Mr. Durham, what is the name and address of your former housekeeper? Why do you ask? Well, housekeepers are rather hard to come by these days. If she hasn't already found a new position, I'd like to employ her. Oh, I, I prefer not to recommend my former housekeeper. I had to discharge her for theft. Uh, good morning, gentlemen. Durham is the murderer, Holmes? Yes. Why are you so sure? Well, 15 years ago, Horace Stackhurst died in extremely mysterious circumstances. Stackhurst? Would that be the Stackhurst of Durham's firm? The same. Shortly after Stackhurst's death, his widow married Durham. And the widow is Betty's mother, I presume? Indeed she was. But the mother herself died within a year, and Betty inherited a great fortune. Durham was appointed guardian until such a time as Betty married. Oh, I'm beginning to understand. Tell me, Holmes, have you solved the mystery of Winnan's dying words yet? The singing violin? Oh, well, that's really very easily explained, Watson, now that the... Uh... Ah, here we are. Just like Holmes to leave me in the middle of an unfinished explanation, bursting with curiosity. But there was nothing I could do about it except wait for his return. I waited up for him until midnight, finally retired without seeing him. And when I wakened the next morning, he was already gone. I didn't see him again until shortly before 10 o'clock. Hello, where have you been? Uh, do you mind going to the window, Watson? What? Uh, I've got a surprise for you. Oh. Go on. All right. No, not yet, Watson. Now, turn around. Now, keep looking into the street. That's better. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, now. Won't be a minute now. All right. Turn around. Well, what? 
A singing violin. Well, that's fantastic. Yes, a fiend with a diabolical mind, our Mr. Durham. Soap on the bow so that no sound should come from it, and this. Come along, Watson. Where to? To complete a plan which this time only you can effect. Oh, really? After you. you at last, eh? What? You've been making advances to my wife, and I am going to thrash you within an inch of your life! Wait a minute. You've got the wrong man. Don't you lie to me! I'm not John Murdoch, I tell you. Help! There's a lunatic loose. I said to fight you wanted it. I've heard about men like you before. You don't smile at your last smile, my boy, you get up on. My answer is final, Durham. I didn't mind certifying your stepdaughter as insane. But I draw the line at murder. If you want her killed, do it yourself. Very well, Marino. I will. But you will have to sign the death certificate. That I'll do. An overdose of morphia would be the best way. I'll prepare a hypodermic for you. She's under sedation now. And shouldn't give you any trouble. What room is she in? Number four. Dr. Marino! Help! Something's happening out there. Thank you. Let it wait. Thank you. Give me the hypodermic.
Don't dare touch that girl. Don't you dare touch her. Or by all I hold sacred, I'll kill you. Durham! Durham, do you hear me? Durham! Are you all right, Holmes? The girl, is she all right, Watson? Just drugged. She'll be all right. Well, what kept you so long? Dr. Marino brought up reinforcements. When I came here, in answer to your summons, I found Dr. Watson fighting with four men. I must say he was holding his own. Now, will somebody please tell me what this is all about? Nothing would give me greater pleasure, Inspector. May I introduce Mr. Guy Durham, your murderer? What? <laughs> Well, of course, Watson, I knew Betty was in danger when Durham mentioned Marino. I met him before and knew he wasn't a doctor, but a charlatan. Tell me, Watson, how did Betty take the news of Jimmy's death? Oh, it came as a terrible shock to her, I'm afraid. Poor girl broke down completely. Well, she's young. She'll recover. And youth has a way of overcoming tragedy. I completely forgot that I soaped this bow. It'll be days before I can play again. Really? <laughs> A wonderful invention, soap. <laughs> it has so many uses. 